Yo, what's up guys? This is Solomon here again. This is the second round of the Oz Fortress LTGO 10 tournament, played about six months ago. I'm playing against a Prem soldier here, and yeah, at the beginning we're just uh, sort of sniffing each other out, a bit like when dogs greet. This happens a lot in LTGO, uh, when players have inversed each other before. We're just seeing how we're going to approach this. If you don't know what Ulti Duo is, it's basically two soldier medic duos fighting each other on this King of the Hill map. It's very intense, it's a lot of fun to play and to spectate in my opinion, and can be played both competitively and casually, like between friends. I think it deserves more recognition because not only does it involve raw deathmatching, but there's also a lot of strategy in coordinating with your friend, like you, you can't play this if there's no coordination. Well, speaking of that, I'm playing with Chickenbird here. He's a legendary ulti duo medic, but um, he doesn't really play the game anymore. Yeah. Just going back six months, I was super keen on winning this tournament. Like, I was practicing about eight hours a day, just on MGE and jump alone in preparation for this tournament. And I'm never doing that again, but I'll tell you why I thought I could win. Okay, the best soldier in Australia, and at one point, probably the whole world, Yuki, was not playing. If you're unfamiliar with the Australian scene, this guy has won like every single ulti duo tournament we've ever had. I reckon he would completely wreck me in ulti duo if he were playing. But lo and behold, he couldn't make it. So I saw an opportunity. I messaged Chickenbird, with whom I've played a lot of ulti duo, and we agreed to enter the tournament. And in the days leading up to it, we had excellent results in our practice games. We weren't really losing to anyone. So, on the night, we get into the IRC, and I'm nervous. I'm not a nervous person at all by nature. I'm fine with public speaking and stuff like that, but we get in, and I'm sort of shaking and, like, getting cold. It was a winter's night, but I didn't want to put too many layers on because, yeah, I thought it would inhibit my mouse movement. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it was just me being a giant nerd. <laughs> Um, but being calm was an absolute imperative. We won the first couple of rounds and we were optimistic. We weren't versing bad players or anything, we were just playing well. Uh, anyway, I was expecting to verse the duo of Termo and Epps in the grand final, and that's what I thought would happen. That was a scenario I'd predicted and to a certain extent even sort of romanticized. Termo and Epps actually didn't win the tournament, which is another interesting thing I'm not going to go into. Uh, but we got into the quarterfinals and all of a sudden we were paired with them. Oh, yeah, that was a bit of a shock. Well, I stayed calm and we got into the server with them. We're about to play, the game's being casted, we ready up, the game begins, and my internet drops out a few seconds in. And just like that, I'm completely taken out of my immersion. What the hell's happened to the internet? My mind starts racing. Is the modem off? Did it just screw up like that? How long's it going to be down for? If it comes back, will it go down again? What's my medic thinking? Are we going to be disqualified? For these three insufferable minutes, I was offline. Well, fortunately, they allowed to play. Uh, they allowed us to play when I came back, but I was playing like trash. Shotgunning at random times, shaking, if you watch the cast, it looks like I have Parkinson's disease the way I'm aiming. I mean, obviously they won the game, but uh, we had 1 minute and 30 seconds or so on the clock at the end of it, which is not so bad, but I think that's partially because Chicken Bird was carrying me a bit. Uh, but I wondered if we could have won the whole tournament had that not happened. Maybe it was foolish to think I could have won in the first place with such good opposition, uh, but I guess we'll never know. Congratulations to Josh and Sam for winning the tournament. You guys absolutely clutched it in the semi-finals and you played a great game. The moral of my story is to stay focused, relax and play your best in any tournament. In social psychology, there's a phenomenon known as social loafing. And it's where people exert themselves less in trying to achieve something when they work in a group rather than when they work alone. And it's evident in ulti duo that the onus is really on you to play your best. It's you and your medic, you're completely symbiotic, you each have very important roles, and poor play from either player is the difference between a win and a loss. 
It's why Highlander is a lot less stressful than 6v6. You don't have to try as hard, and it's because you have 8 other players to, I guess, cushion you. If you're not playing well, you're not going to get chastised for it. Nobody really cares. Um, but I think that's why it's competitively inferior to 6v6. I think Highlander is very fun, but the players are just not trying as hard. In my opinion, you should always play your best in tournaments. Strive to be the star of the game. That, that's what I want you to take away from this, basically. Whether you're playing Highlander, 6v6, or even something that isn't TF2, always just try to be the star of the game. Well, it looks like I have a bit longer, so I'll just talk about the tough break update. Gameplay-wise, this has been the best update yet. The weapon switch speed decrease has revolutionized the way I play Soldier. Man, it's so much more fun. This very positional and conservative style I'm doing in ulti duo, I don't think it'll work so well anymore because soldiers can put out so much more damage with the shotgun now. I think this update particularly buffs soldiers and demo men. It's great. You know, scouts used to be able to kite soldiers in fights really easily and just, you know, basically get them to waste their ammo. But now it almost feels like I'm in control of the scouts rather than the other way around as it used to be. Like, you can scare them by switching weapons and uh, practically get them to run into your rockets, like you use in the Force or something, if you've seen Star Wars. Yeah, you can bait them with a the shotgun. There are so many DM tricks now. The soldier's basically much stronger at close range. Yeah, that tiny switch speed decrease makes the game so much faster and more entertaining. I'm not so happy about the Phlogistonator buff. This weapon has never been good in competitive TF2, but it's always been an absolute menace in pubs. I think the update aimed to make it competitively viable, but all it's done is made the weapon uh, even more obnoxious in pubs. Now, they didn't change its core mechanics, so it, it still has like the same counters, it's just a lot better in pubs. So an unnecessary change. Anyway, Happy New Year, hope you enjoyed the video.